Well, as usual, I'm printing, so excuse the noise and the cat if she decides to come over. But that's not what we're doing today. We're playing with a laser. Turn on the laser cutter. <laughs> this is awesome. Everything is working pretty good. But I have two problems. One problem is that whenever it's over here, quite far away, that just is not sucking all the air in there. And because of that, there's a lot of fumes in here. And I think because of that, some of the fume actually gets out through here, or through here, or maybe even through the gap over here. And I think that's been giving me a headache. So Hakan, I don't know how to pronounce your name, sorry. <laughs> Uh, he suggested that basically my problem is because I do not have smoke assist. So this is the vent that's for the exhaust and this is the air assist. Um, it has a fan that's behind there. I'll show you in a minute. So that actually blows onto the surface area that's being lasered. But what's missing is this fan over here. I don't remember who suggested to use these fans. I bought them from Aliexpress based on their suggestion. I think this is working pretty good. I just put it in there with hot glue and popsicle sticks uh, temporarily to see what the angle is. As you can see, this is uh, currently is not connected to anything. I wanna show you what it looked like without the fan. Okay, here it is without the uh, fan that's on here. And I also intentionally turn off the compressor for the air assist so it will create more smoke so you can see it. See a lot of smoke there? That's because I don't have the air assist on. This time I'm going to hook up the fans that's over here. Okay, here it goes. And so you can see that there's smoke there but it's being blown away towards the exhaust. And the combination between these fans and uh, air assist and exhaust i think that would make everything very very clean so let me turn on all three so there's the exhaust there's the air assist and then there are these fans down here very clean now that we proved that it actually worked let's make something to make it more permanent for those of you unfamiliar with fusion 360 you're in for a trade <laughs> this is pretty amazing program this is what i used to design just about anything these days anything I 3D print and anything that now we laser cut. Let me show you around a little bit. So this is your work area. What, whatever you're working on, we'll show up right here. Over here is your browser. This is kind of like the hierarchy of the objects that you have in here. And then down here is where Fusion 360 really excel. This is a timeline, I believe is what they call it. I call it a time machine. <laughs> As you can see, this is all done, but you can always go back in time so you can go back to add any, any stage during your design. So let's say you do not like this little curve. I want it to be more curvier. Right click this and I want to edit that particular feature that I do not like. It says, hey, that thing is a fillet and it was five millimeter fillet. I'm gonna change it to 10. Watch what happened to here. <laughs> and as if that is not cool enough that you can go back, Notice that it fixed this one for me. It's because this guy is a mirror image of that guy. So let me show you where that happens. So if I go back to this guy, so you can see this guy. So if I go back in time, so notice there is no fillet yet. And I say step forward in time. There was the 10 millimeter fillet that we did. And then notice that there is nothing on the side yet. But this is the next operation is a mirror. So I say mirror and there it is. But anyway, I won't be able to teach you Fusion 360 in just a few minutes. There is a learning curve, but it is well worth it. If you want to learn more about Fusion 360, look up Lars Christensen. I'll give a link on the description here. He works for Autodesk and he's a great teacher and I learned just about anything I know from him. There are many ways to turn this 3D object into something that we could laser cut. The easiest way I found is using this plugin. We just need to select which body that we want to actually turn into a flat thing. So let's just select this base here, for instance. And we'll just save it as YouTube. So I know which one is which. <laughs> and now that we got that in there, we should be able to open this using Inkscape, which is the program that I use to edit vector graphics. 
so we can get it ready to be laser cut. Okay, as you can see, the object is now flat, but it has the wrong color. <laughs> Black actually means uh, raster engraved, but that's not what we want. What we want is actually to cut these pieces, and to do the cut, it needs to be red. So the first thing we're going to do is we do not want any of this fill, but we do want them to be drawn red. Okay, so we need that to make that all red. It has to be perfectly red. It can't be just a little pink or anything. It has to be perfectly 255 red. So now we're ready to run K40 Whisperer. This is the program that will actually send the file to the laser cutter. So we're ready to cut. The red means factor cut. Let's start cutting. We live in amazing times. Just uh, draw it up, print it out, or laser it, cut it out. The rifle comes right out. So I used this glue to glue all the plywood together because it was a little loose. I tried to kind of tweak the number a little bit such that they get smaller and smaller, but I didn't want to waste the plywood. So I just glued them. Their holes are not the same size because I was tweaking the size of the hole for the different screws that I have. I put magnets in there and I tried to form fit it, but it wasn't perfect. So I actually used this glue to glue them together. I think it's working pretty good. It's pretty sticking pretty well. So that should stay pretty good on the laser cutter. So let's put it together. Uh, there's an arrow in here somewhere. Yeah, there's an arrow in here that tells you where, how it goes. So we want to go towards the surface. I think I want the, the wire to go in here. So they're going that way. Yeah, like that. This is one with a small screw. Let's put that on first. Good enough for now. Put the other one on. I need to buy more. Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> it's on my shag carpet. Hang on. Let's try it on, huh? We want the fan to be kind of like angled that way. So this is where I had it before with the hot glue. Now we have two of them. But the wonderful thing about the magnet is I can move it around and experiment to see which placement is the best placement. That's gonna be awesome. I think I'm gonna put these wires over there and through that hole or something and it'll be all nice and clean. Thanks for coming along on the journey. If you like this kind of stuff, uh, please subscribe and I'll share some more. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.